All right, here we're going to talk about quiz seven. So I will go over each of the problems on quiz seven. If you have any questions or need extra clarification, send me an email. And if I can, I'll answer it through the email. Otherwise, we can maybe set up a time to do a one-on-one -on -one Zoom discussion where I can show you in more detail if you need it. Um, but let's try it here first. So here we're integrating a few functions. Uh, these are definite integrals, so we've got the x values. Our first step, though, is to take an antiderivative. So x squared, the antiderivative of that would be 1 third x cubed. And then minus 4x, x becomes x squared, but then we have to divide by 2. So it would become 4 divided by 2, so minus 2x squared. So then with that antiderivative, we're going to plug in our two x values. The top one goes in first. So we'll have 1 third times 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 squared. So it goes into the entire function. And then put parentheses around that minus the entire function with the, the bottom number plugged in. So 1 third times 1 cubed minus 2 times 1 squared. But this minus sign here, this subtraction, is applied to the entirety of that function with 1 plugged in. So be very careful about the signs that you're, you're using. All right, so now let's simplify. 3 cubed is 27. Divided by 3 is 9. 3 squared is 9, so times 2 is 18, so minus 18. Then we'll have minus parentheses 1 third minus 2. So we have minus 9, 9 minus 18 is negative 9, minus 1 third minus 2. 2 is negative, 2 is 6 over 3, so 1 minus 6 is minus 5, negative 5 over 3. Very good job with my spacing here. Um, we have negative 9 plus 5 over 3. Minus minus makes plus. So negative 9 is negative 27 over 3. So that comes out to be negative 22 over 3. So remember, our answer to a definite integral, when you've got numbers on the integral symbol, the answer should be a number. There should not be any x's left once you're done calculating this. It should just be a number. And then the second thing is the fact that the answer is negative tells us that with, res with regard to this graph, there is more area below the x-axis than above the x-axis. All right, so let's move on to part B. I'll try to be more careful with my space here. I'm going to integrate from, this is B, integrate from 2 to 4, the function 1 over x plus 1 over x squared. All right, so let's say it like this to remind you. Um, I'm going I'm to erase these and replace them. But generally, when you have x in the denominator, the way you try to integrate it is by rewriting the function as, a, as x to a negative power. So this would be x to the minus 1 plus x to the minus 2. And these are just power functions. So then you would try, next you would try to use the power rule, which means you add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. For x to the minus 2, that works. x to the minus 2, if I add one to the exponent, I get x to the minus 1. And then I divide by negative 1, which makes this minus. 
but if I tried to do it for x to the minus one, I'd get x to the zero, because I add one to negative one, I get zero, and then I'd try to divide by zero, that doesn't make sense. I can't divide by zero. So x to the minus one is the one exception to the power rule. I can't integrate x to the minus one with the power rule. Instead, you just have to remember that one over x is the derivative of ln x. So the antiderivative of one over x is ln of x. We're integrating from zero from two to four. So I plug in four. X to the minus one is one over x. So that's gonna be one over four minus ln of two minus one half. minus minus one half makes plus one half. So if I simplify, negative one fourth plus one half is positive one fourth. Um, the ln stuff I can just leave as it is. So ln of four minus ln of two. I can leave it like that or you can simplify that using some properties of logarithms if you really care about it that much. Um, Remember, if you subtract logarithms, that's the same as dividing their insides. So I could write this as ln of 4 divided by 2. That would be 2 plus a fourth. It's the same answer. Uh, so either one of these is, is exactly correct. If you want to have an, a decimal approximation, you can plug it into a calculator and get, get that. But I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so now we have a something of a word problem. All right, so number two, I won't write the whole thing, but it says suppose that during month T, so T is months here, a company is earning. Um, R prime of T equals 10 T plus $3,000 per month. month. Uh, I have a typographical error in that problem. So the, uh, it's earning this this many thousand dollars per month during month T or during the month in revenue. So this is, this is the marginal or I guess not. No. No, technically this is not the marginal revenue because it's not per unit. Um, this is the, the amount that is earning in a month. So it's, it's how much the revenue is increasing per month. So the question is how much revenue does the company earn between months t, uh, t equals one and t equals five? So what is the total revenue between t equals one and t equals five? Okay, so now we have to review, we really have to understand what integrals do for us what is the excuse me what is the use of integration well think of it like this r prime that's how much they're gaining at one particular month how much revenue they're gaining at one particular month uh well let me say it again r prime is how much they are gaining in revenue at one particular instant so we want to accumulate that revenue from t equals 1 to t equals 5. Okay, so accumulation, the accumulation operation, that's what integration is. So my total revenue is going to be the integral of r prime t dt between 1 and 5. Because integrating basically cancels the prime, and that gives me 
total revenue, but I only want the revenue between these two T values. So I get the revenue at T equals five minus the revenue at T equals one, and then I'd be done. I'd have exactly what I'm after. Okay, so let me set this up properly now. I'm integrating R prime of T, so I'm integrating 10 T plus three. between one and five. Okay, so we get the correct integral set up. Now it's just a standard integration problem. I'm gonna get uh, t squared over two, so this would be five t squared. Antiderivative of three would be three times t. And plugging in five and one. So if I plug in five, I get five times five squared plus three times five. Uh, I'm out of space there, so let's subtract five times one squared plus three times one. So that's uh, five times five squared, that would be 125 plus 15 minus five minus three. So that's 140 minus eight. So 132, um, but these were measured in thousand dollars. So this would be $132,000 revenue. And it's not, it's not thousand dollars per month because integrating got rid of the per month. We just have something measured in thousand dollars now. All right. One more problem. And now we're given a piecewise function, f of t, or f of x. f of x equals 20 or 4x. It's 20 if x is less than or equal to 5 and it's 4x if x is greater than 5. All right, so I want to integrate from 0 to 7 this function. Okay, so piecewise functions are tricky. I can't just anti-differentiate this thing altogether. I have to, I mean, the formula is determined by what x is. So x is taking values between 0 and 7, but between 0 and 5, this is my function, 20. When x is bigger than 5, my function is 4x. So since I'm going from 0 to 7, I use both of these, but I have to split it up. So what I want to do is split this up as 0 to 5 f of x dx plus the integral from 5 to 7. So we're going from zero to seven. Once I get to five, that's where my function changes. So I have to stop there and pick up again, starting at five and going the rest of the way, rest of the way to seven. So I write this as a sum of two integrals. But now the point is, in this first integral, their x is definitely between zero and five. So my formula for f of x will be 20. So it'll be the integral from zero to five of 20 dx plus the integral from 5 to 7. And on this integral, x is definitely between 5 and 7. So that's definitely in this second case where the function's 4x. So we integrate 4x dx from 5 to 7. So now we do these two integrals and compute both of them and add them together. And the derivative of 20 is 20x. Plug in 5 and 0, plus add root of 4x is 2x squared. Plug in 7 and 5. And now we compute. I'm out of space. So we plug in 5. 
plug in zero, so 20 times zero is zero, that'll disappear. And then for the second integral, we have two x squared to two times seven squared minus two times five squared. Um, that's two times 49 minus two times 25. Whatever that comes out to be. And that's 98 minus 50. So 198 minus 50 is 148. All right. Um, so that's our first, or that's our quiz seven. Again, as long as you downloaded this before Wednesday, April 1st, you'll get full credit for participating. And if you have any questions over any of the, any of the problems, just send me an email and we'll get those questions answered one way or another. All right, that's it.